Manchester Terrier The Manchester Terrier is one of the eldest terrier breed. According to the American Kennel Clubs it is represented by two varieties, the toy and the standard, officially differentiated only by the size. But in its native country the Manchester Terrier is one breed and the toy variety called the English Toy Terrier, black and tan, is another separate breed. To make a long story short it is necessary to conclude that this breed is old enough to collect a bouquet of facts about itself. Many people think that Manchester Terriers are small versions of Dobermans. Oak and rare. Louis Doberman used Manchesters to breed the larger Doberman, and miniature pincher experts say their breed has no shared heritage. Manchester Terriers are considered by many to be the oldest of all identifiable terrier breeds. They are mentioned in books stating back to the early 16th century. Manchester Terriers served an important function in England. In the early 1800s, sanitation was poor and rats were a health menace. Rat killing was a popular sport, and an enthusiast named John Hume reportedly crossed a whippet with a black and tan terrier to produce a dog that would excel at it. Even after the sport was banned, the little terriers had plenty of work to do in the country's public inns, most of which were infested with rats. Inns often kept kennels of the terriers, and after closing for the night, workers would turn them loose in the dining halls to snatch the rats. The breed developed a reputation for having great spirit and determination when facing a foe, even once twice their size. Billy, a Manchester from the 1820s, is still remembered for having killed 100 rats in only 12 minutes. The practice of ear cropping began to eliminate the risk of ears being torn in fights. The Manchester District of England was the centre of breeding by the mid-1800s for these little terriers, so the Manchester name was bestowed upon them. The public wanted dogs of even smaller stature, so some breeders crossed their dogs with chihuahuas to further reduce their size. This caused numerous problems, most notably thin coats, apple heads, and bulging eyes. The very small Manchesters, although delicate and unhealthy, and as small as two and a half pounds, were popular for many years during the Victorian era. Some owners had specially designed leather pouches made to suspend from their belts to take with them when they rode their horses, earning them the nickname Groom's Pocket Piece. Even the smallest Manchester Terriers retained their fighting spirit, however. In 1937, the British Manchester Terrier Club was formed. Its members were instrumental in saving the breed from extinction following World War II. The Manchester Terrier doesn't need a special grooming. Its short, silky coat is easy to care for, occasional brushing and wiping down with a slightly damped cloth is enough to keep it in shape. Bathing is particularly based on necessity. The breed's teeth need much attention though, since they need regular brushing. Besides, look carefully after the ears and from time to time show your pet to the veterinarian. The toy Manchester Terrier is less than 12 pounds, with the standard weighing over 12 pounds and under 22 pounds. Overall, Manchesters are slightly longer than they are tall. Their smooth, compact, muscular bodies express great power and agility which these little dogs needed for their original job of killing vermin and chasing down small game. The Manchester Terrier is a very smart dog and learns everything fast. But there's always a fly in the ointment. It is stubborn and needs a kind but consistent and firm master's hand in each training. Repetition and consistency are absolutely useful. Motivation is the key to the success. The handler of this breed has to be a leader dictating limits, rules and boundaries for his pet. Socialization along with trainings must be started from the very cradle and last all life long. The Manchester Terrier needs lots of exercising. Along with everyday walking it likes running and will be hardly tired. You can go cycling together with your pet, gradually speeding up. This dog also likes playing catch and agility exercises. The great advantage of this breed is its adaptability as it will feel itself equally comfortable in a city apartment and large house. Nonetheless it's worth to remember that without essential minimum of physical stimulation this dog will form several unpleasant behavioral habits, including chewing, 
continuous barking and unmotivated aggressiveness.